guys this is someone that i've never talked about on the channel before but it's all over tiktok and like everyone's kind of talking about the story because it's so crazy like i don't even know who this person is but when i heard the story i'm like this is crazy no way this is real so basically this is girl sedona who like apparently is like a basketball player and she's like up there like she's about to try and be in like that you know the actual girls nba I think it's WB. I don't know. Girl basketball is not that popular as, you know, the men one, but whatever. Anyway, so she actually plays for TCU, which is like, you know, college, whatever. It's a big, famous college team. So she plays for like a big basketball team that lots of people know about. I mean, she has like almost like, I think she does have 1 million followers on TikTok, right? So people know about this girl. I'm not a basketball girly, so I had no idea. But when I dove deep into the story i'm like oh my gosh so that she was a tiktok couple like lesbian tiktok couple with this girl and they post couple content and they went on a trip together and of course like the people watching the trip were like oh it looks so nice so fun but now a few months later after they broke up this girl decided to like tell her story on what actually happened on the trip and then once she released this story on tiktok on what actually happened other girls just started coming out about this girl like that she's like so crazy she's a so psychopath like she's just like she's scary and she's not to mention she's like six foot something like she's tall as hell like scary slender man ass girl no offense to any tall people but like i mean if you're tall you're gonna like use your scariness as an advantage no so anyway this is the story and we're gonna do a little deep dive into this lore because this is so crazy so this is the story you guys and maybe after this video after she tells her story and after you guys get the main story then we will like go over the other stories of the other girls but this one was like the craziest one because the girl's so sweet like how could you do this to her anyway i wanted to share this with you guys because this is so insane I didn't realize that uh, you can still get blocked text messages on your laptop and I just stumbled across one from a certain somebody saying I tarnish what we had and what I'm posting on social media has ruined it. You want to know what tarnish what we had? <laughs> Let's get into it. It's time. Part one of who the fuck did I take to Mexico, okay? So we wake up 3 a.m. for the plane ride. Already was scared because she is not good in the mornings, okay? Was always very angry. Um, so I tried not to step on her toes, try to stay out of her way until we got to the airport. Um, we got on the plane, everything was fine, and then we sat next to each other, ordered a beer, and um, I accidentally spilled some of my beer on her leg. So what'd she do? got up and went and sat on the opposite side of the aisle from me for the rest of the plane ride. And what I do, looked outside the window and cried until I fell asleep and until we got to Mexico. <laughs> the trip that I completely paid for and planned. Planned because she said I didn't plan any dates. Enough dates or get her enough flowers. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we get off the plane. We get to the shuttle that I booked and we get on the shuttle. We have beers waiting for us, water waiting for us, and um, we get into a car crash, not even 20 minutes into the ride. If that wasn't a sign enough itself from the Mayan gods, I don't know what it was. I should have taken it, but obviously I'm not good at reading signs, okay? The first two nights were fine until the third day came around and she was getting upset that she wasn't in control of the plan, so I told her we could do whatever she wanted to do because it was her birthday. And what she wanted to do was rent an ATV. So we went and got the ATV, we had it for the whole day, and then came nighttime. She looks at me and says, I wanna go exploring. I said, okay. And so what did we do? We left our phones in the hotel room and started to drive the ATV in the dark in Mexico. We're going past the hotels, we're going past the shops, and I'm asking her where is she planning to go right now? What is her goal? And she says she wants to go to the arch. After the arch, it's pitch black. Like, there are jaguar crossing signs. Okay, that was part one. We're gonna, we're gonna stop. Part two, oh my god. At this point, I am begging her 
to turn it around and for us to do this in the daytime when we have our phones because we left our phones to be more present in the moment. She's not answering me. She's just going and going faster. We're now past the arch and it's pitch black and it's the scariest thing I've ever experienced. And I'm begging her, screaming, please stop the ATV. Please stop the ATV. And she stops it as hard as she can, shoves me to the ground, looks me dead in my eyes, and then takes off and leaves me in the pitch fucking black. So what do I do? I get up and I start running for my fucking life because I don't know what else. I didn't know what else to do in that situation. I'm literally telling myself, you're going to make it live. You're going to make it. All I can hear are the sounds of my footsteps on the fucking ground because you can't hear anything else. It's pitch black jungle. Okay. For like five minutes, I am running for my life. And the thoughts that were running through my head, I can't even put into words. But I see her headlights coming back i see the headlights coming back and as soon as she gets to me she flips it on its side and what do i do i fucking still run out of, run over to her and i'm like baby baby are you okay trying to make sure that she's okay she shoves me tells me to get the fuck off of her that it's my fault we're in this situation that i held her back so i'm like all right we just crashed you just crashed off an atv let me flip this over it wouldn't start so then I see a car coming down the street and I wave them down and it was a car filled with 10 guys in the back of the truck. Okay. And thank God that they were good people. I asked them to tow us to our hotel. That's a few miles away. They tie up our ATV and she's steering it as we're now going 35 miles per hour behind the back of a truck in the middle of a jungle. She is swerving it, yelling at me, we're broken up. I'm breaking up with you. This is your fault. You're holding me back. And I'm literally saying, okay, we're broken up. Okay, let's just talk about this. When we get back, please stop swerving. I black out. I fly like seven feet off the freaking ATV, my entire left side of my body, completely, completely torn up. And I wake up and I see her already standing and she's making them leave us. Leave, leave. We've got to figure it out. Leave. Thank you for your help. And now they're driving away as I'm picking myself up and we're now stranded once again in the middle of a, of a jungle <laughs> with no phones. Now crashed off an ATV. So I push it to the side and I'm like, all right, let's just fucking go. Let's start walking. That's part two, part three coming. So now we're walking back after both being crashed off an ATV. Um, and I pushed it, by the way, into the jungle. I, I was like, I will deal with this tomorrow. Um, we're walking now, and she is skipping back and forth. Woo, I'm single. Woo, I'm single. Where's my short Latina baddie at? Where's my little Latina baddie? I'm like, what am I even experiencing right now? Um, so then we get into a taxi that happened to be driving down the street. We get into it, and um, we get taken to the hotel, and... The hotel security had to escort her up to the room because she couldn't physically hold herself up. But the next day we woke up and it was her birthday. So it's now her birthday and I've woken up and I'm kissing on her, loving on her. And I'm like, baby, it's your birthday. Like, let's, let's have a good day today. Let's pretend that yesterday didn't happen. And she shoves me away from her. She's like, we're broken up. Um, I'm done with you. I don't want to spend my birthday with you. Fuck you. And rolls her head into the pillow. So I'm like, how can I make her day better? Still trying. And I called the ATV guy and I was like, yo, we just crashed. Um, can you have someone come pick me up to figure out what to do? And so he had someone come pick me up on a moped after just crashing on an ATV. So of course I didn't want to get on it, but I did. And we have to go find the ATV in the middle of the jungle. And we did, they assessed it. It was $800. So of course I just paid for it up front right away. And then um, I stopped at the pharmacy. I got her ibuprofen, neosporin, bandages, anything I could think of. 
And I stopped at the front desk and I was like, hey, we just got an accident. Do you have anything that could possibly help? And brought up a medical team to our room. And when they saw my wounds and then they saw hers, they were like, oh yeah, she needs help first. And I could just see her in the corner of my eye getting pissed off at the fact that I was getting help first. And I was like, I can't do anything right, dude. After the medical team leaves, I literally put Neosporin on her, put bandages on her, and I'm reapplying it every hour. And not once did she ask if I was okay. And I literally at one point was like, do you not understand that I also fell off an ATV too? That I'm doing everything I can today to make your day better. And you're just pushing me away. And all I got was an eye roll and then a turn into the pillow. So I spent that day for hours circling the hotel room, losing my mind, just thinking of what I could do to wake her up or make her feel better. And um, she knew I made reservations for 8.30. And she wakes up at 8 o'clock, of course, shoots up right out of bed. She goes, you know what? I'm going to spend my birthday alone. Fuck you. It's the end of that part. Okay, I had to get myself some water. Um, hold on. So it's 8 o'clock. I'm already ready to go. I'm in a pretty dress. I'm ready to go to dinner. She leaves me in the hotel room. So I'm like, okay. I literally, of course, start crying again. And I get into the bed. I'm ready to go to sleep at this point. I'm like, I'm just going to sleep this day away. Two hours goes by. Um, and then I get a... <laughs> I, bro. I get a text from her saying that she's getting a tattoo down the street and that I should pull up. At this point, I just wanted to see my girlfriend. So what did I do? I got in a taxi and I told her I was on the way. And she told me, baby, I'm so sorry for the way I reacted today. You've planned such an amazing birthday for me. I just want my birthday to be manic, quote unquote. So I said, let's just talk about this when we get back to the States. Let's have a great rest of your birthday. I love you. And I show up to the tattoo shop, and what do I see the first thing when I walk in? Five girls taking shots with her. All right. What? Okay. What am I walking into? There's three girls that I love, still talk to to this day. Two girls, you guys can eat this. Eat it. They are flirting with her right in front of me, literally calling her sexy, mommy, hot. And I'm with the three other girls who were gravitated towards me and were only talking to me. And I'm just pushing back shots because I'm like, I don't even want to be sober right now. Um, so she comes up to me and she's like, oh, they just asked to have a threesome. I said, you're fucking joking, right? Are you actually joking? And she's like, well, I got their number and we're going to go over to their villa when you're done with your tattoo. So I was like, okay, why did you invite me again? So those girls leave, right? And now it's just me and her as I'm getting the rest of my tattoo done. And she immediately goes cold to me, stops talking to me. And um, then my tattoo is done and the girls come to pick us up to take us to their villa. This one girl, and I'm going to name her Francesca. She got out of the front and she literally was like, I'll sit on your lap to my freaking girlfriend. I look at her and I'm like, no, you're not, bro. What are you doing? So then automatically the tension in the car was so awkward. My girlfriend didn't even want me sitting on her. I could literally feel the energy. So I felt like I was just going along for the ride to make sure that she wasn't cheating on me. Like that's literally what I felt like I was there for. And then we get to the villa and I turn to my girl, T who I'm still friends with to this day. And I ask her if she could take me to the bathroom because I just needed, I needed a second away from what was going on. Yeah, that. Next part. So my girl, she comes into the room with me, the bathroom with me, and she's the one to say to me, girl, what is your girlfriend on? Like, she's being way too friendly. So what do I do? I immediately start crying because I, of course, felt validated, and I, I, I thought I was going crazy, but no, other people could see it too. And she's like, girl, I got your back. None of my friends are touching her. She is a freaking weirdo. Um, because 
the three girls that were talking to me that gravitated towards me they apparently were a separate friend group from the two girls that they were with they all met that same night so she was like look if you need a place to stay we're going back to our villa soon you can come with us i was like thank you i appreciate that we go downstairs and you will not believe you will not believe what i see what i saw i don't even know if i can say it my girlfriend was in the pool of the villa without a top on and holding francesca in her arms pressed against her pouring a shot of don julio in her mouth Say, come here, sexy, come here, mommy. Bro. And it gets worse. It gets worse. Just wait. So I go up to her and I say, you know, I'm going to leave. Um, I don't deserve to sit here and watch this. So I'm going to go. And she looks at me and says, if you leave, I'm going to hurt tonight. So I said, okay, bet. <laughs> And I walked up over to my girl and I said, I'm ready to leave. And they all turned to her and started screaming at her for me. I didn't, I didn't even have to say a single word. It was like I had a little posse, like a movie scene. Um, but we get all the way to the front of the villa when I realize I still have her phone in my bag. So the girls are like, stay here. We're going to run it back to her. You don't go anywhere. Stay right here. So they run back to the villa, and I'm at the front now, and I just hear blood-curdling screams. And I'm like, what is going on? So then I see them running out of the front of the villa, literally running for their life. They're like, we are leaving with or without you. We are leaving right now. Your girlfriend is a psychopath. I'm like, what is going on, bro? They said that the look in her eyes when they gave the phone back to her was the scariest thing that they've ever seen in their life. And the thing is, I know exactly that look. So they leave um, because something, of course, in me told me to stay with her. <laughs> and they leave. They get my number. They're like, make sure that you're okay. Please text us. Please stay safe. Like... We love you. We're here for you. And, um, yeah, I went back to go find her. And she was laying in the bushes, saying that her ankle was broken. So I picked her up and took her to the front of the villa and got us a taxi, took us to the hotel, and, of course, had to have security escort her once again. Bro. And what did I do the next day? Still kiss on her. Still love on her. Be like, baby, let's pretend yesterday didn't happen. Let's pretend today's your birthday. Oh, my God. So, like I said, we woke up the next day. I still try to love on her, kiss on her, act like nothing happened the two nights before. That let's have a good day today statement, you know. Um, she turns to me, pushes me away, and says, we're done, Liv. Um, I told my mom, we're broken up. So in my head, it's over because when moms get involved, the game is done. And, um, but then she goes on to call her right in front of me on speakerphone. And her mom says, oh, hi, honey, how was your birthday? Because she didn't speak to her. She didn't speak to anyone on her birthday. She slept the entire day away. And she goes on to say, oh, it was terrible. Olivia completely ruined it. So I'm not going to let that happen, especially two feet away from me. So I hop in and I say, why don't you tell her that you tried to girls right in front of me? And needless to say, that was the start to the end. <laughs> the start to the freaking end. The final straw that broke the camel's back happened. And that's all it took for me to pack my bags and book the nearest flight out of Mexico back to the States. Called my mom, told her everything that happened, and I was out. But what happened was I got blocked. All of the pictures got removed immediately like I was the one who did something wrong. And that's what started the social media snowball, even though they were the one to come to me, pressing me, saying that if I took it to social media... Uh, they would pursue legal action. 
That was the first thing said to me. Not an apology. Freaking. <laughs> Bruh. And look, I never wanted to take it to social media. But it's come to a point where uh, I'm posting normal content and I'm getting pressed about it. As if I'm posting anything alluding to what actually happened. Okay. <laughs> You're poking the bear. You poked the bear. This is, um, quote unquote, what I was told by my ex. Have an amazing life, Olivia. Truly, I hope you find your soulmate. It's not me. Best wishes and have a great life. If you do not want any more troubles, then do not go to social media. If you do want to post about our breakup, I will sue you and your family, my baby, until you can no longer put food on y'all's table. And you know that's the truth. Bye, sweet, beautiful angel. I will meet you in the next lifetime. So I just want to add to the context of everything. When I left Mexico, uh, she stayed there for another 12 days. And in those 12 days, she would not answer anybody in her life besides me. So me, <laughs> being the person I am, still cared for her physical well-being and reached out to her multiple times throughout those 12 days to make sure that she was getting home to the States successfully. We didn't go no contact until after I got all of my things back from our apartment. And to be honest, we didn't end on terrible, terrible terms. And I don't know if that was a subconscious thing on my end from wanting to be able to get all my things back in perfect tact or if it was a trauma bond, truly, I don't know. But the second that we went no contact and I was able to solely process my emotions and everything that I went through, I, I'm angry. I have so many freaking questions, but you know what? I've learned that some of those questions are better left unanswered. Seriously, I don't even want to know. And I've taken the time. I've taken the time to try and stay silent, protect someone's peace who has done nothing but disturb my own. But then when I get a text message by the same person telling me that what I have been posting online has tarnished the love that we shared, that it's disturbing their healing journey. What healing journey? What are you having to heal from? I'm the one having to relearn how to love, relearn how to love myself, love others, trust others. All you did was lose me. And I'm not gonna sit back and get a text message like that and let it go unspoken. Sorry, but I've been quiet for too long. Thanks for listening to my story.